Hey, nice. Thank you for clicking on this video. The Kinder Scout Plateau is a wide moorland plateau at about 600 metres height in the Peak District to the east of Manchester in the middle of England. This weekend I'm heading out to complete the trek all the way round the plateau edge, taking in the full extent of the key features along the way. Hi, I'm Warren Brand and welcome to another Linley's video. Starting from Hayfield, my route up will be via William Clough, approaching the dominant peak of Ashup Head from the west. Back in 1932, a large group of walkers broke the law in place back then, prohibiting access to the mountain lands around the country. They began the mass trespass from Hayfield and went up the path to the left here. I plan to return that way at the end of my trek. I spotted the Sportsman Inn and I'll be very tempted to stop in for a pint at the end of my trip. I have already enjoyed a cheeky pint at the Pack Horse as I set out on the trail. Up ahead is Kinder Reservoir. A railway line was built along the valley here to serve the construction of the dam and a little sign here indicates where a station used to stand. Leaving the village, the open spaces of Kinder appear now in front of me and this encourages me to step out and mentally prepare for the long trek around Kinder Scout. The whole trail this weekend will most likely be just short of 25 miles, including two nights out in my tent and hopefully to include some great views down into the valleys and around over Manchester. The plateau path is almost 20 miles long and I plan to do most of that in one go tomorrow. William Clough here is one of many streams which flow off the side of Kinder Scout, draining the large plateau area. I last completed the full plateau circuit in 2017 and at that time I started on the eastern end, up from Hope Cross. I'm hoping to spot that in the distance around early afternoon tomorrow. Snow is forecast for later so I have my full winter gear selection on my back. A slightly heavier load at 18 kilograms but once I'm up on the top the trek is mostly flat around the rim path. Although it is now snowing it's so calm here. A slight breeze for sure but not cold at all. I'm sure that that will change when I break free from the shelter of the gully here.
from the top of William Clough, the area opens up again. I'm going to cut right just here, using the shortcut path, but the main junction of paths is marked on the left by a signpost. Curving right here a little, I'm now aiming for the top of Ashop Head. Depending on the snow and the time, I hope to push on another couple of kilometres, ideally to pass Kinder Downfall and find a camp spot just beyond. I have a place in mind near a can. I spotted that the last time I was up on the top last year. Ashop Head Summit is not specifically marked on the 1 to 25,000 OS map, but it's the western point of the Kinder Plateau at about 068897. All being well, this will be my camping spot for tomorrow night, having been all the way around the Plateau Rim Path. There are no good views just now, but the forecast is for improving weather by about 8 o'clock, so I hope to get a sunset picture looking over Manchester. Past Sandy Hayes and the trig point further off from the path, I'm aiming for the hard right turn around the top of Kinder Downfall. It is tempting to explore Kinder Downfall yet again, but I've been here so many times and my last video last year includes some great photos of the waterfall and rocky formation, so today let's push on and find a decent camp spot for the night. This is my target camp spot, next to a tall cairn, off the main path and with potentially great views overlooking Manchester. I have my Helleberg Solo with me today, as I wasn't sure how much snow there will be tonight. My Acto is a bit lighter, but I don't think it's as good with snow blowing about. It's not that windy at the moment, but I still use my tethering rope prefixed to the tent with a loop at the end to clip on to my rucksack. I'm pleased with the view. Kinder Reservoir is right there in front and I can see the water of Mermaid's Pool in the foreground just below me. That should be Manchester in the distance. If it remains clear as the sun goes down, I should see the city lights begin to turn on. On the menu for dinner this evening is chicken and vegetables with rice in a sweet and sour sauce. I'd better get that on right away. No table service up here. It's get your finger out and make your own dinner service tonight. 
I've heard a couple of other folk walking past as the path is about 20 metres away behind me. With the light going down, I should be left undisturbed for the night. I plan an early start in the morning so I can make the most of the light to get around the full distance around Kinder Scout. This morning the low cloud has added a different dimension to the view and ambiance to my camp spot but keen to crack on I was as quick as I could be in clearing away from this spot and setting out on today's adventure. away now it's clear where my tent was as the snow has melted but otherwise I'm leaving no trace of my overnight stop it must have been well below freezing for some of the time overnight as there's lots of frozen puddles and the ground is crispy with the snow and frost The next feature to look out for is the top of Red Brook. This falls steeply down and joins the River Kinder about 200 metres below. These rocky features just north of Kindalo are odd as they have circular hollow bowl shapes sculpted out. I have no idea how they were formed. Kinderlow is next with its trick point. There are a number of paths and routes from here and I'm aiming for no stall directly east. I'm not going to dip down to Edale Rocks as that direction is on the route down to Edale Cross and Jacob's Ladder. That's not for today. Between here and the top of Crowd and Cloth, there are sights to see all around. A 
along the trail ahead, the rocky features of No Stool, Pym Chair, the Wool Packs and then Crowd and Tower are all worth investigating. All the while the view south over the head of the River Nose Valley with the top of Jacob's Ladder are clear to see today. The top gully of Crowden Brook is easy to negotiate and in the summer is a useful source of a top up of water. The couple of guys here are on a trek up from Edale and have stopped for a snack having negotiated their way up the cloth. I don't know if these rocky features have a name, but looking at them from the eastern side, I always think that they look like a couple of puppy dogs looking over the valley below. At about 105872, the paths become a bit more complex. Last year I took the right turn here over Grinslow Knoll, but not today. Ahead there is the way down via Grinsbrook Clough, but my onwards route around the plateau is slightly north to cut around the top of Grinsbrook. Pushing on further without delaying too much as best I can, the higher ground of Hartstorn and Nether Tor feature along here before reaching Ringing Roger.
Good afternoon, good afternoon. The views south continue to pass by and where Loose Hill marking the end of the Great Ridge with Mam Tor was ahead in the distance on my right, as I cover the meters, these move further right. Time is running tight, but I'll avoid the temptation to cut off the tip of Crookstone Knoll by going via Mad Woman Stones. I want to see the views from the furthest easterly tip of the Kinder Plateau. So, from the ford at the head of Jagger's Clough, I continue on to Crookstone Knoll. The panoramic views from this furthest easterly tip of Kinder Plateau is really good. Looking a bit back over from where I've just walked, looking south, Loose Hill is there in the middle distance. Around a bit is Wynn Hill and the western fork branch of Lady Bower Reservoir. I can't quite spot Hope Cross, but it's in line with the reservoir at the point where the wall cuts across the grassy field to meet the wooded area. Derwent Edge is there in the further distance and I think the peak of Back Tor and Lost Lad is there too. Old Port Dale is virtually due north just there. Lastly from this vantage point, the bulge of the side of Fairbrook Nays is just poking out in view and that's where I plan to pass over later this afternoon. As I've turned around to move on to take the northern edge path westerly, the weather has changed again and more bullets of hail have started to blow across the plateau. I'd better get a shifty on then, hadn't I? The next section of trek from here to Seal Edge is less frequently used I assume as the path is less paved and much more peaty in places. There are more rocky features to spot along the way and although the wind has picked up, the sun is shining so all is well. I'm getting a bit tired but my legs and feet are holding up so I should get to my target spot of Ashup Head by sundown.
passing the top of Fairbrook as it cuts across the path here. I can see some other trekkers making their way up to the top. From Fairbrook Nays, the path is fairly easy going. I'm just keeping my head down into the wind and aiming for the target of Ashup Head. As it's worked out, I've plenty of time to pitch my tent and get my dinner on before the sun sets. What a fantastic trek today. I've been so pleased. After my cheeky celebratory beer, it's meal time. Tonight's menu includes some bacon pieces, chopped mushrooms, chopped peppers and a stirring tomato sauce. Oh yes, and some egg noodles as well. To follow later will be the custard and apple pies of course. I've talked to a few folk along the way but otherwise it's not been too busy. The weather has been fair and overall I've really enjoyed the complete plateau edge path trek today. As you can see, the golden light of the sunset is rather bright on my not-so-stealthy red tent. The view over Manchester is similar to what I saw last night, but just along a little bit. The skies are now really clear and the view is so impressive. It's been less frosty overnight and with the bright sunlight in the morning I thought I'd sit out and enjoy the view overlooking my tent. I'm up sharply today as the plan is to return back to Hayfield, have a pint in the Sportsman Inn and then move on to begin my next adventure. I'm returning back via William Clough for the first half and then picking the bridle way and snake path down to Hayfield.
Thank you for sticking with this two-nighter, slightly longer video. If you have time, please take a look at another one of my videos on the Linley's channel. There are link cards just right at the end here. A like, a comment, and if you haven't subscribed, a sub would be most appreciated. Thanks for watching and bye for now.